Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Law. Welcome to the Coral Eye. Today we are talking about how to create beautiful vowels in our singing. So before we talk about vowels, we have to talk about what makes a beautiful choral tone. So in my mind, I think of these adjectives, easy, free, resonant, buoyant, matched, vibrant, focused, and energetic. Vowels play a big part of this. So foundations of singing technique really begin with the breath. And then we create sound, which is phonation. Then we can focus on the vowels, shaping of the vocal tract. Then registration, the um, coordination of the two registers, two main registers. Resonance, where we're placing the sound to amplify it naturally. So let's talk briefly about breath. When we talk about breath, it should be low and slow in the body. It is easiest to create the most beautiful vowel if we inhale through the vowel on which we will sing the next phrase. I like also to think of exhaling with warm air. So oftentimes I'll have my singers put their hand up to their mouths as they sing and feel the warm air on their hands. Another idea about breath is breath regions, where in the torso we're actually feeling the breath. We talk a lot about low breath, but what does that actually feel like? And really, with my singers, we think about the breath regions as being across the shoulder blades as being region one, across the mid back as being region two, and across the lower back as being region three. That region three also um, goes across where those false ribs or the lowest ribs are in the body. And really, that's where the lungs end. So the lungs begin here, right below that collarbone, and then all the way down to the lower back. So when we feel the breath region, the more we can feel it low in the back, the more relaxed the breath mechanism will be. So phonation, of course, is the process of making sound. And so when we talk about making a beautiful sound, it's really the balance of air and voice. So the amount of air or air energy to the amount of voice or adduction, bringing the vocal folds together as we sing. So choral tone relies on beautiful vowels in the individual singers. Yes, across the entire ensemble, but it begins with me. So, there are two truths about vowels. One I didn't put on here, but the vowels will allow the ensemble to sound cohesive. Vowels carry the sound. It is the sustain of pitch through the vowel that we're singing or humming. Vowels should be unified, creating that beauty in a cohesive choral tone. So how do we create vowels? Well, the first truth about creating vowels is that they're really created on the tongue. Yes, we know that we have articulators, the mandible, the teeth, the tongue, the lips. They all have a part in creating vowels, but really the tongue position changes the shape of the vocal tract and therefore creates the most fundamental part of creating the vowels. So vowels on your tongue. The second idea is to separate the movement of the tongue with the movement of the mandible. The mandible is the jaw. We want an easy relaxed mandible and sometimes as we move the tongue the mandible wants to join so we have to separate those movements out. And then of course the last one is integrity through the duration of the vowel. As we sustain a pitch on a vowel, we need to sustain also the vowel. If the mandible moves, if the tongue moves, we're not creating a pure vowel, and that has implications for the intonation of the ensemble. All right, so the IPA for six main vowels here that we'll talk about today. IPA stands for International Phonetic Alphabet. 
It's a series of symbols that represent sounds that occur in a variety of languages all through the world. And so to codify the way we speak and create those vowel sounds, they came up with the International Phonetic Alphabet. So if we look over here at this first one, this symbol represents oo as in boot. Try that. Oo as in boot. This next symbol that you see is O as in boat. Now for many American singers, we say boat, oat, and so there's a diphthong where we're creating two vowel sounds on one syllable. So I also like to think of this O as in Minnesota. The next one is the dark A, father, father. And I like to flavor this vowel with just the idea that the corners of the mouth will relax in. Father, father. Over here on the second column, we have these three vowels related to each other. This first one is E, as in eat. Try that. E, as in eat. The next one is very similar to E. A, as in eight. Now again, American dialects, we usually say eight, eight. And so I like to think of this A as in chaotic, chaotic. Related to that closed E sound is the open E sound, E as in bet, E as in bet. Those are the six vowels that we'll explore today. There are many more, but this lays the foundation for a lot of the other vowels that we will encounter in our choral singing. Okay, here is the vowel oo. You'll notice over here on the left-hand side of the slide is a diagram of the side view of the mouth. So you have the chin, you have the teeth, you have the upper lip, the lower lip, and then of course the tongue position. As we go through these vowels, look at the tongue position because the tongue position creates the shape of this space inside the vocal tract, which then creates what we hear as the vowel. This first vowel, ooh. Think about easy lip rounding. It's never tight, it's always relaxed, ooh. Ooh. I like to think of the space as being smaller in front ooh, and larger in back. Ooh. So I'm thinking O oh, in the back. O on the front, O oh, on the back. Ooh. And a light, easy sound that is pointed right at my forehead. Ooh. The next vowel is related to OO. O. And so you can see the tongue position changes here. There's more space in the front. So it's similar to oo. Oo, 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 oo. Try that and try to figure out what changes inside your mouth. There's a little bit of space adjustment inside as well as outside on the mandible. And there's also a little bit of space adjustment here on the outside of the rounded lips. So you can see that it's a lowered mid tongue, slightly more open aperture. I like to think of O as being smaller in the front and larger in the back, just as in the O sound. O, 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 try that. Good job. The next vowel in the spectrum, going from closed to open, is ah. So again, I prefer the darker version with the slightly relaxed corners in, ah. And it's not quite the open O, if you know IPA, it's not quite aw, but it is ah. So relaxed corners will give that warmth to the sound as opposed to ah. Do you see the difference of the corners of the mouth? Ah is a bright ah, ah is a dark ah. So I prefer the darker ah. And again, here you see much more space inside the mouth and less in the, in the very back of the throat. So let's practice oo, o, ah. Sighing in a head tone, 
it might sound like this. Ooh, oh, oh. Your turn. Good job. Now we'll move on to a second spectrum of vowels, also going from closed to open. We'll start with E, as in eat. You'll notice here on the diagram that there's very little space here in the front of the mouth. Most of the space is actually behind the tongue. E, try that. Can you imagine that tongue shape inside of your mouth? E, great. And again, if we allow the corners to spread for this vowel, we'll get a very, very different sound. E, it's kind of brash and forward, a little bright. So for choral singing, I prefer a relaxed corner. E, your turn. Good job. For me, it feels very similar to oo. Oo, e. So the sensation of the sound is right there in the middle of my forehead. Try oo and e. Did you feel it? Great. Another thing to think about on this vowel is to release the mandible. Because it's such a closed vowel, sometimes singers lock or close and feel some tension here in this masseter muscle. So allow the jaw, the mandible, to relax downward. E. Good job. Related to E is the next more open vowel, A. And for me, I feel the A sound in the same place as the E, but it's again a lowered front mid tongue. And you can see that divot here in the diagram. And again, the mandible unlocked. So let's go from E to A. It'll sound like this. E, A, E, A. You'll notice that my mandible does not move a whole lot. Most of the change of vowel happens on the tongue. Your turn. Good job. Now I'll mention this vowel um, because I find in choral singers it's very problematic. And I believe that's because we have a different understanding of what the vowel actually is. So this vowel is e, eh, as in bet. And what I find singers doing a lot of times is creating too much space at the mandible. E, eh, e. Eh. And so with too much space, the tongue doesn't have a chance to actually create the shape of the vocal tract because the vocal tract is too open. So e. E, e. And you'll notice that there's not a whole lot of change. If I open up too much, the sound can become flat. I'll demonstrate. E, e, e. And so, of course, there's no pitch there. I'm just sighing, but the sound itself loses it, its focus if we open too much at the mandible. So now, let's practice all of these vowels with some beautiful vowel shapes that I like to use in my teaching. The first is ooh. The second is to make a giant O with my body. Oh. Ah. E. E. And then I don't have a, 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 a movement for E eh because that's I like to focus on these basic five vowels. So with me, let's try. Ooh, ooh, ah, e, e. We talked earlier about how to create these vowels, the vowel truths. The first is that the vowels are always created on the tongue. The second is the separation of the tongue and the mandible, and then also creating the integrity of the vowel through the duration of the pitch. So I want to share with you three exercises that I use with my singers in the choral ensemble to help us learn these concepts. The first is lip buzz with vowels. So I will lip buzz, but my tongue will create the vowels on the inside of my mouth. The pattern will be this. 
But a lip buzz on the outside. Try with me and Good job. If you're able to get the differentiation of the vowels on your tongue behind the lip buzz, that proves that the tongue is primarily responsible for creating these vowels. The second exercise I want to share with you is tongue out vowels. This helps to create the release at the mandible and to create the separation between the tongue and the mandible. So we'll just take our tongue and relax it out over the bottom lip as we say the vowels. Your turn. Good. Ooh is hard because we don't have the help of the lips to round that vowels, that vowel. Now, try it on a descending pattern. Your turn. And once we have created the sense of what part of the tongue is moving during the creation of the vowels, then we can put the tongue back inside where it belongs and the vowels become very warm and free. The last exercise I'd like to share with you is arpeggios. These can be small arpeggios or larger arpeggios. But the point is to create the sense that the vowel doesn't move. The vowel on the tongue doesn't move. Of course, as we get higher in our registers, we need to create more space with the elasticity of the mandible. But let me demonstrate here. A relaxed mandible and the vowel stayed consistent on my tongue. Now, if I tried a larger arpeggio, I need just a little more space for the top note. You can also try two vowels. To see how quickly you can change the tongue position for that uppermost note that changes to the wide open ah. Without creating that wide open openness at the mandible. Okay, this last exercise I'd like to share with you is singing text on vowels only. And this is a wonderful exercise for solo singing as well as choral singing. It zeroes our attention into what we need to be doing in the vocal mechanism to create the most beautiful vowels. So this uh, text is from Sarah Teasdale's poem, and this is so beautifully set by Jake Runestad in his piece, Peace Flows Into Me. So you'll notice here that the text is above the IPA. I've only IPA'd the vowels. So this vowel, as we know before, is E. This one, O. Oh. This one we haven't learned, it's I, as in pin or into. This vowel is U and E. A, A, I, U. A, U, I, A, O. You'll notice that these two vowels have a colon inside of them. That represents a diphthong, where you have two vowels on one note or one syllable. So, by, I is the vowel, okay? So, let's read through these together, vowels only, in your singing voice, which is a little bit higher and more sustained in your resonance than your speaking voice. So you've just now created your focus a vowel for each single word. Now, if you know this piece, we can sing it together on vowels. And that 
is singing on vowels. Thanks so much for sharing this time with me today. I hope that this is fruitful and helpful for you in your own journey of choral singing. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me or direct message me in Facebook. Happy singing!